Patrick Cooch from the Carlton Footy Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Dane Zorko here from the Brisbane Lions. Jason Johannesson from the Western Bulldogs. Luke Parker here from the Sydney Swans. It's Roy Sloan here from the Adelaide Crows, and you're listening to the Coaches Panel. Max Wall and Melbourne Football Club. This is Matt Fife from the Fremantle Footy Club, and you're listening to the Coaches Panel. Hello, friends. MJ from the Coaches Panel. 12 rounds of your fantasy footy season is in the back rear vision mirror. You've now just got a handful left to go. The new DPPs have dropped for AFL Fantasy. Ultimate footies land in the next kind of 24 hours. Plenty to talk about as we enter into round 13. And got on the line, Kane. Hello, mate. Hello, MJ. Well, we finally got the information we've been waiting for with the fixture. How long have we been asking for this? And it's so good to finally have that last piece of the puzzle. Oh, it's fantastic to now know what we're going to do. For AFL Fantasy Coaches, little much of a a game changer we know in that format. The the rules they announced a few weeks ago are are really going to help you navigate the year. And these are this for AFL Fantasy. Best... Uh, opportunity for you to use the rolling lockout every single round. That's happening now for the rest of the year. Three trades a week, use it or lose it. And then it is, if your team is off on a multi-buy round, uh, those players uh, will be awarded their average if they played uh, the week prior to their buy round. So that that's the big one there. Uh, Dream Team and Super Coach, you've both been in those formats, awarded three trades a week uh, in addition. It'll be best 18 in rounds 14, 15, and 16. And if you're playing in a head-to-head league in round 15, uh, it's basically a buy in your league. So your fixtures... Head-to-heads, yep, final start round 14. Uh, but it's pretty much, it counts for your ranking, but not much else. Uh, like you said, though, Kane, now we know the teams, now we know what the formats are doing, and now it's all about the strategy that coaches undertake. Yeah, and I think there's going to be a lot of strategy, MJ, based on what your team is made up of. Because in particular, that middle buy, the one with six teams on it, we look at some of the premium players that are going to miss. You've got Geelong. You know, we know the superstars they have got in the midfield, namely Duncan and Dangerfield. Yep. Stewart down back at his price was a really juicy option. And obviously, coaches grabbed him before we had this information. Mm. So you couple that with Port Adelaide, Dan Houston in defense, Travis Folk's been amazing value. Yeah. The Saints, Jack Steele's been one of the a picks beast. of the year. And then we get to the Bulldogs. Cool. Now, take your pick of the Bulldogs midfielders. And again, especially after what they did on the weekend, you'd yeah. be absolutely thrilled. And then you throw in Caleb Daniel and Bailey Smith at other ends of the ground, maybe Mm. even a Tim English. Yeah. We're talking, and we've only got given three extra trades, MJ. That's a lot of pain for a lot of coaches. Plus, you've got the Kangaroos in there, so it's the Simpkins, the Goldsteins, and even the unique Luke McDonald, who's had a great month. Exactly. And then the other fact that people are starting to realize, I feel, across the format is you don't have the bench depth that you had five, six rounds ago. So not only are you losing premium players, but to even think, and I've looked at my own team, any given week, I could have anywhere between zero and five rookies be available for that round. Mm. You think about Vitel was a great you know, pick up last week on the rookie front. He's got to buy then. Yeah. If people are thinking about Kavara, he's got to buy. Woodcock, Georgiati. All of a sudden, close, and obviously Simpson now injured. You throw in the Gold Coast guys in Butterick. Mm. All of a sudden, this bench depth that's been there for us the past month when it's we need them help. the most, they're not going to be there. So I think this is where the strategy is going to become really crucial because you're going to have to be looking at sideways premiums, I think, because it's one thing to have 18 on the field. But as we always say, Andrew, how many of them are actually premium bodies? Because we know with the rookie scores this year, and we saw it on the weekend from a lot of guys, you're going to get a lot of 20s, 30s, 40s. does nothing we for know, you. In fact, it doesn't do much. And if you've got one premium, that can be, you know, push into that hundred territory in a, you know, a DT AFL fantasy scoring and maybe even the one twenty. You can make up for having a donut if they're rookies. So, yeah. um, obviously now we've got the whole picture. We know who we can be trading those guys to. So I'm sure we'll chat about that in detail a bit later. It's true. One of the things also for Dream Team and Super Coaches is you're only allowed to make two trades a week this week, heading into round thirteen, and then from round fourteen through those three multi buy rounds, you will be able to access up to three trades a week. So really, coaches can make up to eight trades to between now and the uh, way they navigate themselves through that pretty difficult round of round 15 uh, where Geelong, Port, the Suns, the Saints, the Roos, and the Bulldogs are all missing time. 
But that's a lot of trades for, for coaches that are nearing a completed side. And by that, I mean a side full of premiums. Most teams are, are pretty close in Dream Team and Supercoach to it. Maybe one or two upgrades left to go, even if they're not happy with the form of some of their premium players. I don't see many teams that would have much more than 12 trades up their sleeve. And that's including the three additional trades they've just been awarded. Yeah, well, that's the really interesting part now, MJ. So, obviously, we've got this round being a full 22, and obviously, AFL Fantasy, like you mentioned off the top, is 22 players throughout the whole of the bye period. But in DT and Supercoach, this is our last round of fielding 22, and then we'll have three rounds where it's just best 18. So, I've seen some train of thought be, well, how important is having, you know, 22 premium players if I'm going to go into a round where I've got best 18? And what I'd say to that is, it's Balance. Yeah. Obviously, the more premium you've got, ideally, the better chance you have to score big. Correct. Clearly, if you've got all of them from one buy round, it's a problem. There's going to be a lot of pain. Yeah. And you look at the you look at round fourteen, Adelaide and Brisbane. So yeah. the real one, obviously, that jumps off the page is Lockie Neal. Yeah. Alex Witherden's been sensational, mainly in AF, where obviously you're going to get his average, which is. The way he's trending, MJ, you're probably going to get gifted an 80-plus score yep. in that buy round. We spoke about him a lot last week, but Rory Laird was one that was, you know, the buzz name of the week after his, you know, at that point it was a season-high score in AF mm. and, a, and a monster score in Supercoach. But really, I don't see too many teams being impacted by no. that round. So if you think about it like that, if you've only got to say Neil and, and Laird and you've got, you're fielding 22 premiums in a normal week, you should yes, be fine. You, you'll be dropping two of your premium scores that won't make your best 18. What I see will be the issue, though, is the following week. 15. You could have you could have six to seven to even up to ten for some people premiums out of your side. Plus then the rookies who look like you said, it's hit and miss at times, but a, a Will Day's style score, as we saw last week, is very, very helpful. So I think if you compound those two issues together of multiple big-name premiums off and any sense of coverage, teams are genuinely going to struggle to get 15 or 16 on field regardless of whether they're premiums or rookies. Yeah, exactly. And, and back to that initial point, I, I always think it's important to keep building out your team. Yeah. Because as we can see, if you do get a stinker from a premium, at least having another premium player available gives you that chance to offset, especially if they've got one that, has a higher ceiling, and if they pop that week, and again, there's some good matchups coming up for a lot of teams mm. in this next period. I always just think if you can keep building your team, the, can, the point with that is though, you have to be happy with the player you're bringing in. There's no point bringing in a premium player just on name alone. You know, you really have to be confident that their scoring is going to be right up there. Yes. And we're down to a point, MJ, where now we're talking about six rounds. Yeah. And if you think if you take six round chunks of seasons. There's players who don't finish in the top six in the back line, but in a six month in a six week block, I should say, can average over a hundred. Like that's just the nature of it. So those are the players you have to look for. But I'd always be keeping in mind, and you have to do this stock take that we've been speaking about for the past month. What are the bodies you will have available? And have a really honest look. Because for instance, if you've got Sam Sturd on the bench, yes, Fremantle's playing every round. Yep. But he's been ruled out for the year. He's dead weight now. So he's, he's another body. Now all of a sudden, if you've got Bailey Smith and Jai Simpkin in round 15, your best case scenario is you're fielding five fours. Yeah. So have a real hard look at your team. It's usually a good place to start is just add up your premiums. And that will give you a pretty good idea of how you're faring in each round. Because not only should they score well, but at least you know they'll be on the park. Again, I can't predict if a Sam Wicks will be in that Swans team when you need him. You know, yeah. if you at least do that, it can really simplify your decision making. Like you're not gonna bring in, you know, a, a Mitch Duncan as much as much as you love the matchup with the Crows this week. Yeah. If you if you've already got Dangerfield Steel, McRae, Bonson Pelly, <laughs> that just would be ludicrous. You're just gonna absolutely put yourself in a world of pain. So again, I think you've really got to take check of your team. And we've already got eight teams off the buy MJ. Yeah, there's plenty of Warm There's bodies to consider. Options. Really yeah. good options. We'll look at them in a second. You bring up this interesting kind of sub-thought about uh, 
these teams with great matchups. And, and some incorrect advice amongst the fantasy community that was going out last week, and I understand where it came from, was around the idea of trading Bailey Smith. Uh, yeah, he'd been pretty underwhelming the past month, but any man and his dog has that has watched any football this year knows that regardless of the line, if your team is coming up against the Crows, or that player is coming up against the Crows, it is money for fantasy points. And so while I understand, yep, maybe out of form a little bit, maybe out of role a little bit, when your team comes up against the Crows, as an example, it doesn't matter the line they're in. Chances are they're going to go over and above their average. We know the history that teams score well in defensive positions against the Tigers and Collingwood. Um, we know that teams give up points through those runs. So while we do need to look and consider who's coming off the bye, who's coming up to a bye, what are the matchups? Is if we're looking at getting rid of these guys that are a little bit underwhelming, look at their fixture matchup because yeah, I think some teams are going to think, okay, like Adelaide is just money. And if you want to look at who they're playing for the rest of the year, they've got a pretty nice matchup. If you're a Cats, if you own Stewart, Duncan, Menegola, Dangerfield, Hawkins, here comes the points. At the round after that, it, the Crows won't actually lose a game, so that's positive for their fan base. Then it's Hawthorne. Tom Mitchell could have a genuine 200 in that midfield in Super Coach. The week after that, it's GWS. The week after that, they come up uh, against Carlton. Patrick Cripps, hello, anybody. And then in the final round of the year, probably the least exciting team from a fantasy perspective that could have been in the final week of the year is Richmond. So I suppose maybe a dusty and a prestier if you want to go unique. But like those are the sort of things coaches need to keep an eye on too. Yeah, I think a lot of the logic last weekend day with a Bailey Smith type was people being overloaded in round 15. So yeah. I get the logic of, like you said, there's two trades this week and there's going to be three the next week and there's going to be another three. Yeah. That's eight trades, NZ. That is so much time, of time to ship off these round 15 players if you are overloaded. And you've done that stock take and you realize there's a world of pain. And you, you didn't need to, to do it last week. That's, that's my point. You had a matchup against Adelaide. And also on the flip side, in terms of Bailey Smith's value, he wasn't going to go down any further. Again, no. we've trumpeted this for a long time, the last month. We said James Sicily, and obviously we wish him all the best with his ACL injury. Yeah. That wasn't anything to do with my thinking. But my point was, he is at such an over-the-top value for a player we'd seen scores volatile in the past. He's prone to a roll switch, which he actually got against West Coast. He went forward in the fourth quarter, and obviously the injury ended his day early, but it was still going to be a 50-point game yeah. regardless. Bailey Smith was the opposite last week. The value was so low that your best bet was to think, okay, he's got the Crows, yep. and then he's got two more games before that bye. He's not going down. Net, I should have just let him play out, and if I want to move someone else on, move him on at peak value. Yeah. Again, you've got to, you've got to be making some money off of it. That was the thing I always be trumpeting. At least you can improve another line mm. if you move the Sicily on in the past. Again, he could have burned you. He could have kept up 120. But Bailey Smith, now coaches that kept him have a 150 in his rolling average. And guess what? It's going to cycle out as he hits the buy. So he's got two more games, even if he plays just solidly. You're probably going to get a 40 grand increase Back again. over the next two weeks. And then you can cash him out. And guess what? By then, You've collected more information, and you've now got two more teams available on that bot. You've had yeah. Adelaide and Brisbane, so your options have actually gone up. So yeah. that's why I didn't quite get moving him on, because the value was so low, yeah. and I didn't see much upside. If there was a player on the flip side that um, you know was an absolute top dollar, and you thought, yep, he's, I mean, he's never going to be worth more than this, and it allows me to do get another player I like off the buy and another player up, I get that sort of move, but when I saw people spending money yeah. to take a Bailey Smith up to a Michael Walters and Andy Brayshaw, like Yuck. you just you just start again. And those guys were poor by their standards, particularly in Supercoach. Both of them have been absolute stars, but it was always going to be an issue for Fremantle when you've had Sarong emerge, yeah. Chera emerge, and now you've got Fife, Brayshaw, and. Walters and Mundy to all juggle in that midfield. Yeah, it's tricky. They were going to take points of each other. So, again, I love the logic of getting ahead and moving players on, 
Jesus. But I think you just have to, again, the matchup should have been the flag in itself. Absolutely. Let that match up. And now, again, people that have kept him, in two weeks' time, if they want to move him on, if he's the guy they need to move they on can. to you know, keep as many bodies on the field, they can, and they're going to get a hell of a lot more out of it. Yeah, no, I think so too. Look, if you want to check out some players, you bring up James Sicily there. If you want to go check out some players uh, that I think are, are decent trade-out targets, around about 26% of uh, super coaches, which is a decent chunk, uh, have to make that trade. And then around about uh, 8 or 9% in DT, around about 8 uh, 11% in AFL Fantasy have to do the trade. Um, I, I've given you an absolute bucket load of options to check out at coachespanel.tv. But if you want the summary, Lloyd is your number one pick if you don't have him and you got some cash. Otherwise, I think for me, the one I really like the most at the moment is Luke Ryan. Yeah, he's, he's an absolute general back there in terms of he sits a kick behind the play. He yeah. organises the fence and also... The kick-ins. He gets yeah, so correct. many free points. And again, if, if we're talking mainly about a super coach point of view, I think as well with him, MJ, is yeah. he's actually so good defensively yeah. in terms of spoils. Again, that's why he can turn an 80 in, in DT this year into a 160 like he did on the weekend. Yeah, Because he does all these acts that aren't registered in that scoring of the game, but super coach picks it up. And um, I think he's a great pick. The hard thing for me, MJ, and I've said it at this point of the year, we said it with Laird last week. Yep. He's just come off a monster score. Correct. He's already at peak price yep. for me. I I would be looking somewhere else. Yeah, Again, value, the people that already have sure. him have already enjoyed that absolute whopping score. We're talking about 582K. It's a lot of super coach. Coach. MJ. It's a lot of like, cash. Guess what? Nat Fife's 1K cheaper. Huh. Like This is the type of stuff, like, again, as good as Luke Ryan's been, you're at absolute top dollar and, and I don't know unless you're playing a different game for me cash is really really hard to come by this point of the season again I don't think there's too many rookies we have a ton of confidence with Yeah, I'd be looking at a Zach Williams type for 100k and not a great comparable. matchup this week yeah. but again he's another player that he actually does a lot more defensive work than people give him credit for True, and also he's so dynamic with ball and hands that he doesn't need much of it in that format to produce a good score. If you can be patient, and maybe you can address the back line in a future week, especially with, again, best 18 coming up, Yeah, you'd have to like Nick Haynes yeah. in two weeks. Well, super again. coach, he's got a break even this week of 151. Um, in yep. AFL fantasy, if you look over in that form, he's certainly not, he's still a good option there, not as dominant in there. He's got a break even of 104, uh, comparable between the two um, in uh, Dream Team as well. So probably not as super scoring importance in Dream Team and super, and AFL Fantasy in contrast to Supercoach. But but he is probably that value pick. Callum Mills uh, is under 500,000 in Supercoach. He's good. But with the news coming out today of Dane Rampey uh, out for the year due to that broken hand, it, it just adds an element of uncertainty about his role because that, that Sydney defensive unit, they're so adaptable. One person's going to play that accountable role that Rampey does. But is it him? Is it Thurlow? Is it Melican? Um, does Aaliyah come back? And like, there's just so many uncertainties about how that Sydney structure goes too. Yeah, the other one I really like in defence, and it's probably again a little bit more super coach is Adam Chera. Yeah, I like him. He just seems like the type of guy that you know he's averaging, you know, in the mid to high 80s now. Yeah. But his past five weeks, he's gone at 97. Yeah, it's not bad. And again, it's a, it is a busy engine room now. It's Brayshaw, Walters, Fife, Mundy. Wrong, all these guys, but he's just so polished. And you're talking about a guy that's under 460k. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, and he's shown a ceiling in the past. So again, not a not a, as we mentioned last week, MJ. It's not a line that there's screaming options that you really have to get around. Yeah, which is why I see people wanting to go to the Luke Ryan's of the world. I I do get that, but again, we're talking about 131 his last three, 127 Super his gosh, last yeah. five, and his average for the year is 106. Yeah. So, again... Yeah, are you paying some... overs when it's difficult to get cash? And I suppose, like, yeah. to that point, a, a, a player that's caught some people's eyes over the past fortnight, especially across all formats, is an Angus Brayshaw from Melbourne. Back-to-back uh, -back tons in Dream Team and AFL Fantasy. I think it's now three in a row in Supercoach. And he started to look, at least over the past few weeks, the CBAs are up, um, that time on ground has increased. There's some variable reasons for it at least a couple of weeks ago with, with Viney out. 
but but is he the kind of guy coaches should be considering looking at in terms of to finish off their side or even in AFL fantasy maybe a, a little bit of a cash stepping stone to get to a, one of the big boys they don't have is he the kind yeah. of player we should be looking at or is there or is there a bit of fool's gold about him given the past few weeks and the opposition that Melbourne have had I think the hardest part with Angus Bracer MJ is what's your expectation yeah that's the thing that I really wrestle with when I look at him because you look at Melbourne the past three weeks, they've had three easy kills. Yeah. You know, I didn't think Collingwood would be an easy kill, but they the were. way they're going at the moment, it ended up being. Yeah. And Brayshaw was really good. Statistically, what you brought up is, is really, really true. He has got center bounce attendances, especially in the past two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, the one with Viney out, he was up in the 90% Makes sense. range. Yeah. Dropped, dropped down to 75 um, last week, but that's still a fantastic number. Mm. If you're attending three out of four CBAs, that's enough that's inside enough. midfield opportunity. Yeah. Hard part is, you look at the next two weeks, yeah. you've got Bulldogs, Saints, and Swans after that, you know, they're not crazy easy. And Fremantle, GWS, and Essendon, it's not like a dream sort of run. And the funny thing is, the dream run was what he had the previous week. Adelaide into North Melbourne, into yeah. a worn-down Collingwood who seems to be leaking points you know, quite regularly at the moment yeah. just with the state of their side. So, again, what are you happy with, MJ? Because you look at DT alone. He's gone up nearly 100K in the past two weeks. So, really, the price isn't as cheap as we may think. Again, it's cheap if he goes at 100. Absolutely it is. But I just get the inclination that as good as he's been, um, you're, you're at a price tag where there's some more reliable and consistent players, I think, on the horizon if you're just a little bit more patient. Yeah. Well, who are some of those players? Because that's the thing. It's it's an interesting pivot point in the year. We've got a handful of weeks to go. If you're playing for league finals, um, they pretty much get underway next week in Dream Team and Supercoach a, a week following in AFL Fantasy Drafts. Um, depending on the format you play, there's a little bit of customization about how you could choose to adapt that ultimate footy have given you, whether or not you've paid for it or not, they've given you enough versatility to be able to structure your league finals in and around so that you can be able to do them as uncompromised as possible in a highly compromised year. Um, but what do we do? This this kind of next week or two really does set up that final push at the end of the year. Not many cash cows coming through with any job security at all. And the ones that do have anything vaguely looking like it are on that round 15 multi-buy. But we've got these guys that just in a week or two have a lot of value and have some historical good scoring. We talk about the Nick Haynes. And then you look at the West Coast Eagles with a player like a Tim Kelly. We know Elliot Yo's now out. But there's some guys that offer some value. And do we have more trust in, say, a, a Tim Kelly across the formats delivering for us as, as opposed to a an Angus Brayshaw? Yeah, I think you definitely do. Again, the moment with Tim Kelly's probably a week or so away, yeah. particularly in Supercoach. The ones that stand out to me from DTMJ, Luke Shuey, yeah. he's 573. Sam Walsh, 607. Yeah. And it, like those are two guys that, you know, are proven 100 guys. And I know Brayshaw had that absolute mega season. And yeah. that was one of the great seasons. We had him as a defender that year, and it was incredible. The hard thing is, it's still a busy Melbourne engine room. And I just don't know if it's going to hold up beating all of those Petrarca, Viney, Oliver. And Tom Sparrow is getting a real opportunity yeah, there as well. And it's just one of those things that I just feel it, it just doesn't quite, you know, the scoring before that, he was going at 54 points a game, MJ, yeah. DT, before the Adelaide game. And those scores, 103 and 100, we're talking, you know, 125 plus scores mm. in the old. Like, it just smells to me that, again, as good as he's been, you know, you've already missed 100K of that cash generation. Like, yeah. It just seems really tricky for mine. The other one that I sort of like on the run home, and he does have a buy coming up, but, you know, it's a buy where you shouldn't be too overly impacted, affected is Jared Berry. Yeah, I like, like him. He's got that ability to go big. Yeah. 
you'd think if anyone's going to be, you know, in-game managed in this, you know, footy fixture, it's probably more the likes of Zorko, yep. those type of guys. And he has a ceiling about it. You know, you've got, he's got St Kilda this week, a bye, and then he's end of the season's Collingwood, Gold Coast, Sydney and Carlton. Yeah. Like, he's the type of guy for me that, you know, if they want to, as I said, put in a bit of an in-game rest on a Zorko, you know, maybe Neil steps out for a few rotations just to get him cherry ripe. Barry's the type of guy that can come in and go big. And obviously, the unique factor is huge. He's only in 1% of um, sides in DT. Mm. I feel like that's the type of guy for me. And, and again, Angus Brashaw is a really good player. It's just more for me the matchup and how convincing Melbourne's been. And I just don't know if that will you know, happen against the likes of St Kilda and the Bulldogs coming up. That's more what scares me. Supercoach as well, he's never really been his format. No, it hasn't. Even, even in that peak period, he's at 10 point worse off guy in Supercoach. Yeah. Like that's just how he plays the game. We, talk, we spoke about that with Taranto last week. He's similar in that sense. And um, that makes it really tricky because you're up to 4.17 yeah. in that format. And again, the break even's 10. So... If you think you're going to ride that roller coaster, if he goes a couple eighties, maybe he makes you sixty k. Yep. But if he but if he stagnates at a ninety, MJ. Yeah. And in a week you can get a 110, 105 guy for the Correct. remaining five games. And the other thing is really, if you look at Gus, outside of that one thirty, he is the type of guy that more hovers in the nineties and low hundreds. He's yeah, not really nice. going to set you up in a best eighteen round. No with a monster score. Again, in, in DT, he can. Because 100 is a great score this year. Yeah. I just feel like, unfortunately, you had if you were if you reacted to the Viney out and you got him for the North game... Well done. That's where the big gains have been made. But as I said, he's up 100K in two weeks in Dream Team. Like, you've missed so much of that cash um, generation. So I think you really have to do the math. What am I getting at this price? What am I thinking the output's going to be. Yeah. And then also, what am I giving up? You know, if, as I said, if you wait a week, is there another player that you like a hell of a lot more that's going to come into your price range? Or right. maybe you do a double downgrade this week and you can use a loophole. You know, maybe you can give, you know, a buy tell or something, a look this week and mm. say, hey, maybe he can give me a 50 and instead of brace or 80. So I think that type of stuff you really have to consider. Um, it he's feels a very tricky like, yeah. one though, MJ. It feels a, a little tricky. like lead for me, like a week ago where it was all all the stars have aligned um, for a period of time and now he's fine. But if you just wait a week, I think, as you've said, better options at a comparable price um, that give me a little more comfort, for sake of a better term. Are there? I, I just I couldn't do it personally. I get why people would be keen on it. If there's a format it's to probably AFL do it, fantasy AFL is Fantasy is the one where where you you do it for two weeks, um, and you take the cash because cash generation is tricky yep. in any format this year. And if yep. luck goes your way and you get a couple of eighty five plus average scores over the next two weeks, awesome, it, it's worked out well for you. Um, on the other side, if you get a couple of 60s and 70s, you abandon ship, but you're probably 30, 40K better off. So I think that would be the only format I'd advocate for it. Yeah, that's the thing, MJ. You want, especially in these best 18s, like you bring in a guy like Chewy or someone, at least you felt there was value yeah. in what he had been doing. And especially when you're working around these injuries. Yeah. And I'll throw out a guy that he still has his buy. And again, there won't be too many teams that are in this position to take him off. But I'm picking Joel Selwood over Angus Brayshaw every day of the week. And in Supercoach yeah. at the moment, Joel Selwood's 375 with a matchup against Adelaide this week. Yeah. I saw some commentary around he's not getting the midfield opportunities. I promise you, he's getting as many midfield opportunities as he can handle. Yeah. The ball just was not finding him. And when he got it, he did not use it as well as Joel Selwood normally does. Correct. But again, you're about to walk into the matchup against the Crows. Yeah, exactly. And if you are risk adverse and you want to see him put a good score on the board, you know, totally fine. Post buy, he's probably not going to be much more than four hundred, no. Than four hundred K. Yeah. And this is a guy that before he got injured, he was going at one oh nine in Supercoach. In Supercoach yeah. With two, with two scores above one forty. Yeah. 
But that's the type of guy that in a buy round really can separate you in this best day team. Correct. Because like we said, if, you, if you're not affected in rounds 14 and 16 and you've got 20 premiums, and a couple of them are the Angus Brayshaws of the world who are hovering between, let's just say, 90 and 110, and then you've got Joel Selwood who might go 60 or 150. Yeah. Like, that's where the big gains are made because that Selwood score is probably going to drop out of your scoring anyway. But hey, if he hits, Money. He's, he's absolute. So that's the type of reward I I want to look for as well. And again, in Supercoach MJ, everyone's forgetting Jeremy Cameron. Yeah. I know he was horrendous. Horrendous. And even in DT is an option. And again, yeah. we know what people in that, in AFL Fantasy did last year in the final round of the season. People won cards on the back of Jeremy Cameron's yeah. monster score in that round. So he's the type of guy. And, again, and he's got the crows to come. He's got the crows to come. West Coast is a matchup that I would try to avoid yeah. <laughs> this week. Yep. And also, he's got a 23 in. in yeah, let that Super drop Coast. out. Yeah. Let that roll a little bit. But this is what he's got after that, MJ. Tell me a game you don't think GWS should win out of these. After West Coast, he goes Fremantle, Carlton, Adelaide, Melbourne, St. Kilda. Yeah, wow. That's not bad. And they're going to get a rocket after a terrible match last that's, week. That's, again, he, he's going to get a rocket because he was. He was Absolutely. poor. He was poor by his standards. Yes. And he's an elite player. Yeah. The team was horrendous. Yep. And MJ, they're in a fight for the eight. Yeah. It's not like, that's the problem you worry about. If you're a good team and you've got Adelaide late in the season, like I look at... Richmond. You know, like you mentioned with Richmond. Is that a game that's just, you know, a few players arrested? That's the risk. And again, yeah. there'll be some people who are nervous with Geelong this week thinking, well, I'd love Dangerfield against the Crows, but... Is he going to sit forward the whole game mm. and sort of just, you know, get by and are they going to coast by? But, again, the GWS to me, every game, it's they a might final have for to them win now. them all. Yeah, it is a gen- there are no certainties, probably with the exception of four, maybe five teams for finals this year. Uh, yep. Everything else is wide open. And so I, I think percentage counts every year, but even more so this year. And, and top four, while there's real no home ground advantage for most sides this year, that double chance, we have seen what football this year can do. We have seen some crazy things where uh, you don't want to have that bad week uh, in finals ever, but you want to give yourself every opportunity to win it this year. And so, yeah, I, I still see teams, while they're not clamoring for a home final, they are clamoring for that extra safety. And what we don't know yet, is is there a bye week off between the end of the home and away season and the start of finals, like historically there's been? Or are the AFL just going to push through uh, and, and just keep getting footy going? Because if they're just going to keep pushing through, that win in that qualifying final, that week off, man, that's going to, like, remember four or five years ago how coveted that was because you could get fresh legs into a final two weeks of the year. Uh, it was incredibly value. It's valuable. It's less so now given that everybody's getting that extra week to freshen up the bodies. But if that's what the AFL do, man, top four has some value now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what you want to see. You don't want to be seeing people rested. And that is always the concern with these teams yeah. that are that are ruled out of finals contention is that if someone gets something that you know, requires off-season surgery, let's just put them in for surgery. Yeah. Um, but again, there's not too many teams, I don't, I don't think, in that bracket really this year. Obviously, the Crows... Again, even with their winless record, they want to try everything they can yeah. to stop that from happening. North Melbourne again. Same. Look how they responded after they copped an absolute rocket and Reese Shaw, you know, dropped some really well paid yeah. players at the club. So I don't think we have as much concern about that. And I think in particular, MJ, in a shortened season, players want to play. Yeah. You know? That that's how they sort of earn their living, getting those those match checks. So it's going to be hard to keep these guys out of the team unless it's you know a really proper injury that requires surgery. Yeah. And especially with reports coming out that the season could start later in Next 2021. Yeah. And there's not going to be as much to turn turn things around. But I think those are the type of guys. Like I'm just going to jump ahead now and say it, MJ. People are going to be trading the Bailey Smith mm. in that round 15 buy. Yeah. To the Jeremy Cummins of the world. Yeah. They're, they're right. going to take their 100k. Yep. They're going to have that extra body and a particularly one that's got a massive ceiling and is playing some of the lesser teams in the competition. Yeah. That's the type of ride 
I think people are going to want to be on in a few weeks. Yeah, I, I think so too. Uh, let's get to some of the questions that have come in from our Patreons. It's been a few weeks since we've had a chance to get to some questions, but if you want to join our Patreon army, there is exclusive access and content that you can get. All your details for that It can be found at coachespanel.tv. Uh, first question, it's a Keeper League question for you though, Kane. Tim wants to know, if you're a Sicily owner in a Keeper League and you're in contention this year, what should you be doing, and what's his value at the trade table? I can definitely be putting a few offers out there. I oh, think yeah. if, clearly you've lost one of the best backs in the league. So yeah. you'd be looking for a good a good back. Yeah. Um, again, you've got to have to check in your league about who are the people that are ruled out, and particularly are there any that really are on the rebuild front and even next year wouldn't really be in their plans because you've got to realise with a Sicily ACL... It's 2020 and 2021. Yeah, you're not going to really get him at all until the very end of 21. And then, honestly, MJ, what can our expectation be? Low. For a guy, you know, exactly. So you're looking at a team that really thinks 2022 is their best shot. Again, I think a guy, if you're really going for it, Basha Hawley's a very cheap commodity for what yeah. the reward can be. Um, Hearn, those type of maybe. Hearn, again, not feeling as confident at the moment. Nick Haynes would be one yeah. you'd have to be interested in. Again, not as popular. Brody Smith, I think, is another one that yeah. really, when he's been fit this year, he's flying. Yeah. He's been a very com- you know, capable very good defender pick. and he's a very good pick. Um, yeah, I'll be trying to package something up like that and, and you know, just really sol- solidify your defense uh, with yeah. a guy like that. Again, I think your ideal one is a Hawley. Yeah. Um, I think if you got something else with him that you were, you really like the look of, maybe you'd take on a Hearn. But yeah. again, you'd be worried that if he got a little rest yeah, you'd you know, in the time want, that you need him most. You'd want something that's going to help you this year in that finals push and maybe going to give you some value sneaking into the early part of next year too. You probably don't yeah, want to go I, too I all in on this year in the sense of you're getting rid of a five to eight year premium defender for a guy that's probably got five games of footy left in him. That's uh, yep, probably exactly. selling the farm a bit too much. But if you can get a Hooli and maybe... Something that could Duggan be on field. Would be something would yeah, be interesting for yeah, me. If you've got, like if you've got two guys like yeah, that, I don't mind that. The coach is thinking, you know, as good as Duggan is and as solid as he is, um, you know, Sicily's a clear upgrade there for yeah. my, The other one that would be fascinating if you could get him is Luke McDonald. Yeah. Because that could if be you want, if so you want high, instant owner. reward, if you want instant reward now, and that's what coaches in this finals push are getting, yeah. is the current state of that side. Luke McDonald is going to play this role for the end of the year because yep. you've seen the likes of David Junior get pushed into the midfield yeah. along with Simpkin, along with Anderson. Nick Higgins is out. Yep. McDonald's not doing the tagging role we saw him do on Bonson Pelly earlier in the year. Cunnington's not playing. Cunnington's not playing. So, again, I think a Luke McDonald, again, he, he the person selling him, if they're out of contention, they'll be thrilled because he was a scrap heap guy. Six weeks ago. Start of, yeah. Even so, six weeks ago. But you have to watch the game and see what he's doing. He's yeah. taking all, pretty much all the kick out. Yeah. He's the They're transition. very happy to possess the, the, Exactly. So he's the type of guy that I'd be interested in. Um, other than that, if it's a midfielder, again, you'd want someone that's um, around that mark. And really, you're going to be guided by what are the coaches that are out of contention in your league? And yeah. particularly, what are the ones that are in a heavy rebuild and don't really want Sicily services until 2022? Yeah, correct. I think it's a fair call. Uh, Louis wants to know, uh, are we playing the break-even game with Gus Brayshaw in AFL Fantasy? I think we've already talked about that, Louis. Uh, I don't mind it um, uh, as an option. The, the most important thing for me is getting rookies off the field where you can. And, if, and that's where it would help, MJ. Where it would if, you, help. if you are taking on a Brayshaw, it's probably going to... And they do have three trades yeah. in AFL Fantasy. So you might be able to... And I've seen it popular already. It's like Caleb Sarong to Brayshaw is pretty much same, same yeah. price. So if you're doing that and then your other trade is a downgrade and an upgrade, don't mind it. You probably do feel pretty good about yourself yeah. going into the next round, you know, as opposed to Sarong down, rookie down, and then getting that Big mega boy. premium yeah. up. So I think that's where again, and the great thing of that format is you've got that eject button, MJ, 
at every any week. Time. You don't you don't have that fear or favour of you're not locked for six trade. weeks. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you can you can pivot really quickly if you see those centre bounces drop off, or if you you just see a roll switch, or you don't like the upcoming fixture, or someone else presents. It's really easy to move in that format. Whereas that's the other ones is where I worry that if he reverts back to seventies and eighties. Now you're sort of going to have to spend another trade to move him on. And he's got the buy out of the way. See, that's why he's got, you know, good value there also. Yeah, correct. Uh, Kyle wants to know, Travis Boak has a point of difference selection in AFL Fantasy. Is it 685 in that format? Over the next couple of weeks, it's Hawthorne, Sydney, Western Bulldogs. Uh, and he's coming off a 90, a 100, a 46, and a 94 in his last four. Yeah, I love I love what Boke's doing, MJ. And the good thing as well with Boke is the two lower games. Yeah. Again, St. Kilda was an outlier where yep. he got some mention from Geary and that was a genuine poor game. But if you look at the Western Bulldogs game, he was heavily managed inside that game. Port Adelaide did an incredible job managing Wines, Pow Pepper and Boke. And it wasn't a surprise that after that period, they played Richmond and Geelong. And Boke was back to his absolute best. So, yeah, I, I love Travis Boke as an option. And yeah, as you said, in AFL Fantasy, we don't even have to worry about the buy. Currently getting an 80. And Hawthorne's a side that I expect a guy like Travis Boke, especially after that loss to the Cats, yeah. to bounce back super strong. And, again, if people don't have too many around 15 players in other formats, then Jay, I'm all for getting on Boke there yep. as well. I think he's just... You know, a great player. I think so too. John wants to know in AFL Fantasy, he's given us a, a look at his potential trades this week and he wants to get your take. Uh, he's trying to get uh, rookies off the field. He'll still keep Rankin, but it would mean he gets rid of Sicily, McPherson and Wicks. He brings in Thurlow, Eagles and Brayshaw. If Eagles is on the field, mate, you're in a world of trouble. But what do you think about those? Sicily, McPherson and Wicks out. So two injury force moves. Thurlow, Brayshaw, and Eagles. Yeah, I think Thurlow, I just feel like, has to come back to earth a little bit. MJ, again, he's been really good. And especially in AFL Fantasy, he presented that option where he played a really great game just before his buy. And it gave you a free 80. Gave you a free 80 and And the cash cash generation. So in a three-week span, there's 380 scores. Off two play games. Yeah. Um, I just think that, you know, the norm for... Thurlow is more in your 60s yeah. in this format. That's a, that's a good... Again, mid-60s, MJ, is still an 80 in the old. Yeah, which it's is, fine. But... Which is great. And I, I just feel like that's where I would rather you go a big dog. If that's your options, I'd rather you take the Thurlow person down and chance an arm with a rookie. and yeah. then take Maybe not Eagles. Up. <laughs> yeah, not Eagles. Exactly. Get him up to someone that you think you're more confident with. That Cottrell yeah. um, in defence looks good. Yep. Just really get that absolute big boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially if you can if you can get to a Neil, MJ. You're about to get a Neil score. A guaranteed and hundred. A, and then a Neil buy score. Which is a hundred. That's where exactly. So that's where I would and we always say, MJ, when when the rookies go bad, yeah. we always say we've got to get the rookies off the field. Yeah. And then when we go they go good, we get a bit fancy with trading premium. Yeah. So I know it stings to have some rookie poor scores, but I think in that sense, if I'm going to two guys as good as they've been lately, yeah. they're still mid price guys in my mind. Yeah, I agree. In Thurlow and Brayshaw. Yeah. I'd take that opportunity to let's get to a big dog and get be really happy. Like and I think, think, yeah, especially those guys who've got great averages and you know you're going to be banking those in throughout AF. that buy period. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Nathan wants to know he's got three rookies currently on the field McPherson, Rankin, and Day. He doesn't have Neil or Whitfield. Should the strategy be to get the rookies off the field or make the sideways moves I need to to get these, quote, must haves in? What format was that? Sorry. Uh, no think? format listed, but I know no Nathan's format. a big fan of AF. Yeah, well, that's. That's really tr- that's a really tricky one. And again, in AF, you don't have the best 18. So what I mean by that is a Rankin in a super coach in particular, it's in fine. best 18, it's fine. is very valuable because yeah. of his volatility and he, he scores so quickly. Like he can turn a... And we saw it even last night. Yeah, he, he goes from a 20 to a 50. Digit. Yeah. Yeah, so he's a guy. But in, in AF, we don't have that waiting to you no. know impact on game. Yes, you will get some of these really low scores. 
I think Will Day could start on You him, can hold him for a while. You can hold him for the whole season. If you have honestly. to, yeah. He's Again, comparable in AFL fantasy and dream team. He, he was within 10, 15 points, if not less, of Luke Ryan, Tom Stewart. You, you, these premium guys that we look at for potentially the Sicily upgrades, he's showing that he's within 10 to 15 points. It, it's the one line in dream team and AFL fantasy I hate upgrading. It's the backs. Yeah. There's just nothing I like there. And so, look, to answer your question, Nathan, just get McPherson and Rankin off the ground. There's some cash yeah, cows with decent doing. break-evens you, that you can go and get, and then go and get yeah. some guys that you know are going to perform in lines as best as possible. Day, low-priority trade for me. Yeah, I agree. I'd, I'd leave Day where he is and get rid of those two boys by using that third trade. And again, MD, it might be taking a premium that you think at great value yeah. and generating 100K that way. You yeah. Know? Do that sort of. I'd rather do that sort of stuff because, like you said, the backline's a line that I just don't have any real confidence in. Not in those. I'd points. rather leave a guy like Will Day there, who, and if you watch him play on the weekend, he scored good. thirty points in about five minutes. Yeah, late in the game, like he is that type of guy with his kick mark. And, he and with no the Sicily so now, beautifully. there's all more. Exactly, um, you room for him there. So yeah, I, I agree. I think he's the low one. Uh, last two questions uh, before we wrap up the episode. Uh, Dale uh, is asking. A tactical super coach question. He's considering doing a, a broad bent, uh, which for long-term coaches panel fans are familiar with that term. If you're not, it's basically pl- picking a guy under value but has a nice fixture is the short, shortened version of it. And he's thinking of doing it with Big Maxi. Uh, he's got a huge break-even. There's a few rucks with very, very low break-evens. With the spare cash, I'll be doing a couple of upgrades of rookies to players who have dropped in price. Then when Maxi's bottomed out, potentially... Get him back in. He's still got the nine trades, uh, but he wants to make those moves. Is that the kind of strategy and tactic we should be looking at in Super Coach? Yeah, you know I was massive on that MJ huh. three weeks ago. I was I couldn't sing the high enough. Once I saw Gorn's injury and the value you were getting for him, yeah, I think this is the exact type of move. Again, the really tricky part is where are you going? Are you going all the way down to Draper? The mm. good thing is if Draper's named this week. You'll know. You're about to enter best 18 again. Yeah. So that's where it gets really scary having Draper as your R2, especially if you have no cover when you go into a best 22 round. You yeah. go into best 18, that, a lot of that risk is taken away. And again, he is quite expensive now. He's up to 214K in that format. Again, the buzz name MJ will be Nick mm. Nat. Yeah. 142 is last three. Again, though, you've missed 100K from when Gorn initially had that injury. Nick Nat's fixture is sensational. Yeah. Again, he's dominating pretty much everyone, but he's also running into uh, he's running into the Giants. Hmm. And then he goes on this crazy run of Richmond, Essendon, Bulldogs, oh Saints. Uh, the only question, obviously, in the back of everyone's mind is, does he get a rest? Yeah. In a, in a condensed fixture, That's again, the unknown. it has to hang over your head. He, his minutes have gone up throughout the season. And it, so it's no surprise that his scoring has as well. So he's yeah. one that definitely um, is attractive. Riley O'Brien, don't the mind. buy round's really friendly. Yeah, don't mind. Really, really friendly. You're not going to have too many issues there. Geelong doesn't really have a notable ruck and he's scoring no. you know, solidly. Um, I still think Todd Goldstein prevents, presents great value, albeit, again, a really tricky buy. Yep. And the one I think that if these injuries keep lasting to these other Brisbane big men, Oscar McInerney is a guy that yeah. you can bring him in and then actually move him to the forward line. Yeah, with Darcy Cameron. And he's a very, and he's a very comfortable you know, forward to have the way he's going. Again, we're talking 101 is last five. In super coach, 113 yeah. is last three. There's just not that much fat on the bone with these guys, MJ, because Laddams, McInerney, and Nick Nat were all at bottom value at the a same time. A fortnight line. ago, yeah. And so that's really um, got away from us, and that's where I think people will be interested in Draper. And honestly, the guy that if you really want to you know, <laughs> take a risk, yeah. Tom DeConning looked great. He looks very good. Tom DeConning looked really good. So, he looked good. Um, again, you're going into best 18, so you're, you're covered in a sense, and maybe if you've got Draper... And deconing, mm. you can get you can get by, and you're thinking about if you're taking Max Gorn to deconing, 
Cool. You're turning two rookies into two very good premiums. absolute ubers. So yeah, yeah, that's what I'd be weighing up is what what am I getting? How do I compare a nickname to the midfielder I want? Yeah. Because really, in terms of form, you've always got that get out of jail free card with Nick Nat is he is gonna go up in price. Yeah. That's so that's probably what I'd be looking at. And again, obviously like you said, the caveat is you want to bring Gorn in mm. um, when he's back. The hard thing is I don't know when he's gonna be back. This PCL is clearly lingering. Yeah, I don't know. And every week he doesn't play is another is... week he doesn't drop in price. Yeah, and not but a lot of cash that's just sitting there not being activated. Yeah, you have on your to field. move him, I think. You have to move him. Yeah. Um, and I think to simplify it, your option is probably Nick Nat or Goldie, depending yep. on your makeup. I'd I'd lean Nick Nat just because he is buy, buy free. free. Yeah. And he's got that red hot form that at least he will appreciate, you know, probably at least twenty five, thirty K. Yeah. Flip side is you throw absolute caution to the wind. You drop down to a Draper or a Deconi. And just have a crack. And you just have a crack at improving other lines. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Uh, last question before we wrap up the episode. Uh, and it's a an eye towards 2021. Tony says his season's done. He plays for leagues. He's been smashed with injuries. He's no chance of finals. So he's already starting to think about 2021. Might be a Crow supporter too, Tony, by the look of that. Um, he's thinking, who are the guys that we should be keeping an eye on for 2021? He's suggested two in Supercoach. Rowbottom and Chera both would be mid-only picks, I would suggest, in 2021. Is there anyone, Kane, that for you, you are kind of sneaky eye on for 2021 already? I think those two are great picks yep. off the bat. Um, I really like what... Um, Davis Uniac's been doing. I've been yeah. singing his praises the past few weeks, and he's got that explosiveness back. If you, if anyone watched any any of his work at a junior level, yeah, it was huge. It was compared to Chris Judd, and in rightly terms so. Of his, his his ability to burst from a stoppage, and I, even the past few weeks, I've seen him taking on players, and, you know, stiff arming them, yeah, and actually running with the ball. So I'm really impressed by him. I think everyone's forgetting how good Wayne Miller is. Yeah. I think people need to remember just how polished he is, especially from a super coach perspective. perspective. He really is that Zach Williams mold yeah. to Crows where, you know, a 40 DT score becomes an 80, 90 um, pretty comfortably. After that, it gets, it gets really interesting what we're going to get because there's so many McInerney we just don't know. and Laddams, you know, if they're rucked forward again, in terms of value in your structure of your team, it's helpful. They become huge, especially with Steph Martin clearly aging. Yeah, um, and Archie Smith is really a backup. And I think, you know, this has been an audition for Big Oscar McInerney. He's done a good job. He's done a really, really good job. Other young guns, MJ. Who else do I think is a player? I think, well, in terms of value, Connor Rosie is going to be so underpriced next year. Yeah, he's carrying an injury clearly. For he's a not lot playing of the this week either. He's yeah. not playing this week. Um, he's a guy that the potential's right Sky up there. High. Like yeah. he's just a really, really quality, um, quality player. So he's one I think will be really, really cheap. But like we, like we know him, there will be players in this last six yep. that become the, the Houston's of last year. Yeah. You know, Jared Lyons. These guys went from being you know so so players. To being really, really strong options. Yeah. And if it wasn't for, you know, Ryan Burton going down, that's been the catalyst to have to move Houston back. He still showed Potential. some real flashes. Yeah. Um, and there, and I think even some um, higher price guys, MJ, for a bounce back. If Seb Ross is going to get to that point where it's so cheap. Yeah. That next year in an AFL fantasy, you're talking about 15 to 20 points under price. It's so, true. I think there's plenty of great options. Again, even Josh Dunkley, MJ, we know what You'll his be value. potential yeah. is. So um, plenty of options. Plenty of, plenty of options, yeah. that's for sure. And one of the things that we'll, we'll learn over the off-season is how, especially Dream Team in AFL Fantasy, uh, how they price their players. Are they going to price them at their minus, you know, field time of the shortened quarters, or do they do the maths and add the 1.25? You know, there's so many uncertainties and unknowns. And while, mate, I certainly appreciate that your eyes are focused on 2021 with talk that the AFL season could get underway as late as May next year. Uh, I think it's a long way to be thinking about 2021. MJ, but certainly I'll, something I'll throw we'll be a couple doing. few more in, actually. Right, that very quickly. Really interesting. Very quickly. A couple of Suns boys, and we, we know how much people love the trade period. Brody. Will Brody and Braden Fiorini. Yep. Both have shown enormous fantasy potential. If you want 
you know, high highs. Yeah. Those guys can do it. And you just wonder if there's another club that, you know, needs some midfielders, if those are guys that could be, you know, of use to them, I'll put it that way. Yeah, no, fair enough. There's a couple of teams that could certainly use some big body midfielders rolling through there. Hey, Kane, appreciate your thoughts today. No worries, MJ. Uh, if you want to go and check out uh, all our other podcasts are available via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and also Google Podcasts. You can go and check them out. If you haven't already, leave a nice little five-star rating and review and tell somebody else about the Coaches Panel. Articles drop in pretty much every day at coachespanel.tv. And while you're there, you can find all the links to join our Patreon army, support the Coaches Panel, and get some exclusive content, including a chance to win some cash through some of our cash leagues. It's probably a little late for 2020, but, you know, maybe get jump in early for 2021. I hope this round is kind to you. Enjoy a couple of days of football-free evenings. But we'll be back again next week talking about all the big fantasy footy issues and helping you with your sides.